Hey guys, in this video, I want to give you the simplest, the most concise, and the most effective way to be healthy and have energy. A commenter on one of my YouTube videos asked me recently, he said that it seems like I'm healthy and I'm high energy all of the time, which I assure you is not always true. <laughs> you know, I try to be high energy and, and uh, make my videos when I'm in a state of feeling good. However, I've gone from a state of being almost always low energy, almost always lethargic, almost always getting sick constantly. And I've managed to really completely transform my health for the better. And so in this video, I'm going to give you in the most simple possible terms how to do that. Now, the normal modern lifestyle is, is extremely unhealthy. Right, and, and people will try to convince you otherwise, but if you, if you really dig into the statistics, the life expectancy is actually going down, has been going down for something like the, the last 30 years. The incidence of all of the common diseases are going up like crazy. The obesity rate is going up like crazy. Uh, you can look into that further if you want, but really all you have to do is look around. I mean, go to the DMV sometime. I like the DMV. Or, well, I hate the DMV, but I, I enjoy uh, seeing the other people at the DMV because when you're there, and uh, by the way, if you're not American, the DMV is a Department of Motor Vehicles. That's where you go to get your driver's license or to update a car registration, that sort of thing. And so it's interesting going to the DMV because it's a cross-section of of everybody that lives in your city or in the area that you live. And so generally we kind of uh, associate with people who are like us, right? If we're, if we're rich, we live in a, a rich neighborhood and we go to rich people's stores and we see rich people, but if we're poor, we're, we live in a poor neighborhood. And we always, you know, the people around us are tend to be like us, but at the DMV, everybody is equal because everybody has to go there. So you kind of, it's a bit of a culture shock sometimes. You see, this is how the other half lives, sort of. So anyway, what I would say is just go to the DMV and look around. Do the people look healthy? Do the people look fulfilled? Do the people look like they have happy lives? Right, and, and my experience has been the answer is overwhelmingly no. But since you're already watching this video, I probably don't really need to convince you of that. You probably are well aware. And so, the, the thing I want to start with is that there are a ton of things that are unhealthy with a modern lifestyle. It's not just one thing. It's not just McDonald's. It's not just uh, soda pop. It's, there's a million different things that are contributing to our general poor health. And it's really easy to get overwhelmed and to just kind of want to give up, right? It's like that, that old joke about everything gives you cancer. Right, you get so tired of hearing about all the things that are giving you cancer, it seems like there's nothing that you can do. And so what I wanna uh, preface this video with is that yes, there's a lot of things in our modern lifestyle that will make you unhealthy, that'll give you cancer or make you unhealthy in some other way. And so the best thing that you can do is just make a change a little bit at a time. Right? You don't have to turn your life completely upside down all in one go. If you can change just one thing as a result of this video, you're going to be just a couple percent healthier. And then if you can go back two weeks from now and change one more thing, you're going to be another couple percent healthier. And if you can do that for, let's say, six months, just a little bit of an improvement at a time, you're going to look back at yourself six months in the past and you're not even going to recognize yourself. The difference is going to be immense. So don't get overwhelmed. Don't feel like you have to change everything at once. Now, from what I've found in my own personal experience is that physical health is 80% a result of spiritual factors and only 20% a result of actual physical factors like what you eat and how much you exercise and how much you sleep and that sort of thing. And this is something that mainstream science has sort of caught on to a little bit, but I believe that in the coming decades, they're gonna figure out is a bigger and bigger and bigger portion of our physical health. So some examples of the things that we already know are the placebo effect, right? If you have faith that you are being healed, then you're more likely to be healed. If you have faith that your health is improving, then you're more likely to actually improve. That's a, a spiritual factor, your faith, having a physical, a measurable physical effect. Or another thing that we realize that if you have stress, 
then it ruins your immune system and causes ulcers and all sorts of other terrible things, right? Stress is an emotional state. Stress comes from your spirit and has measurable physical consequences. So we've figured out that the spiritual affects the physical, but we really mainstream science, in my opinion, has only just scratched the surface of how impactful that actually is. So because it's the most important factor, I'm gonna start with what you can do to improve your health from a spiritual perspective. So the first thing, and this is probably the one that is most well recognized, is having stress or having relaxation. If you are stressed out a lot, you wanna to learn to relax, right? The best way to do that is to learn to meditate. And I would highly recommend that you make a habit of meditating every single day. I do it in the morning. First thing I do after I, I brush my teeth and put in my contact lenses in the morning is I go outside and I meditate for a few minutes. And if you've never meditated before, then there's, uh, there's some apps, there's some videos that you can get on how to do it. It's really very easy. Um, there's one called Headspace, there's one called Calm, pretty much any one. They'll teach you to focus on your breath and just clear your mind for a few minutes. That's a perfectly fine way to start. It doesn't really matter so much which meditation you start with. Just find one that's fairly short, that's not gonna seem like a big burden on you and, and give it a try. Do that every day for a while. That will make it much easier for you to reduce your stress and start relaxing. Next thing you can do that is super helpful is to stop complaining and start having gratitude. Whenever you find yourself complaining about something, well, there's two ways that you can do this. Either, and it, well, this is the easier way. Either remove your focus from the negative thing and find a positive thing. Right, so for example, if I'm driving down the street and there's a traffic jam, I can complain about the traffic jam or I can be grateful that I have this car. I can be grateful that I have these streets, you know, even if they're congested, I, I'm able to transport myself long distances. I can be grateful that I'm very comfortable in a car that has air conditioning and, you know, if you're Living in Florida in the summer like I am right now, that's a big deal, right? There's a million different things that you can be grateful for. Be grateful that you're able to see. Be grateful that you're able to hear. Uh, be grateful that you have a radio and you can listen to music. You know, there are a million different things in any situation. You can take your focus off of the one little thing that's bad and start focusing on the things that are good. And then if you can develop this, and this is a little bit more difficult, but if you can develop this even further, you can start thinking about how the thing that you think is bad might actually be good. For example, the traffic jam that you're stuck in is an opportunity to practice your gratitude, right? Is to practice your patience. It's making you a better person. Uh, and, and, and maybe the traffic jam is preventing you from getting to some place where something bad would happen. Right? Maybe it's actually protecting you from something. Uh, maybe the fact that you're missing the first 10 minutes of whatever you're going to was a good thing because you're avoiding something that should have been avoided, right? There's a million different ways that the thing that you think is bad could actually be good, but you being stuck in the situation just don't have that higher perspective. So if you can take a step back and think about how that higher perspective might look at the situation, then even the thing that you're complaining about might be something to be grateful for. Which is actually a topic that I covered in great detail in this video, all about why you should be grateful for your struggles and why you're struggling now may well be a great asset for you in the future. Another thing that makes a big difference is to take your doubt and turn it into faith. Another thing is take your resentment turn it into forgiveness. Another thing is to take your guilt and turn it into repentance. Now, these painful emotions, by the way, like resentment, like guilt, um, even pain itself, like physical pain, they're all warning signals. They're all trying to tell you something. They all exist for your good. If you have pain, let's say that you put your hand on a hot stove, that pain is telling you there is something wrong, your body is being damaged, change something fast, right? Emotional pain is exactly the same way. If you feel guilty, it's because you're doing something wrong in your life and you need to change that thing about your life. Other things that'll make a big difference is to take pride 
and turn it into humility. Pride is terrible because, as the Bible says, pride cometh before a fall. If you are a prideful person, you always have to worry about that pride being damaged. Right? It's a, a fragile thing that you constantly have to protect, and it takes up your energy and it takes up your health. Whereas, if you can come from a place of humility that you don't have any ego to protect, you, you're not trying to prove yourself, you're not trying to impress anybody, uh, then life just becomes so much easier. Like, there's so much less that you have to worry about. So, if you will do those things, then you will be much more spiritually healthy. And another just really quick shorthand is to just listen to the words of Jesus. Right? I mean, you can read through all four Gospels in a few hours. It's not that long. Just take the moral advice that Jesus gives you, and you will be far and away more physically healthy than you were before. Right? I mean, I think it's kind of funny that, that people see religion as this, this kind of transcendental, mystical thing, where in reality, it's just, this is how to live your life, in a way that is going to work and that's going to make you happy and fulfilled and literally physically healthy. Okay, so that's the spiritual element. Now let's get into the physical elements. Now, again, the spiritual is more important, so if you have to focus on one or the other, I'd recommend that you focus on the spiritual. However, the body is a physical material being, and so it has uh, effects from physical material causes. So there are a variety of things that you can do to improve the health of your body. So the one that's most talked about is diet. So I'm going to start there. Um, I don't recommend really specific, restrictive, difficult diets, right? I, in fact, I don't recommend diets at all. I recommend a, a lifestyle that follows a certain philosophy. And so I'm going to give you my philosophy on food. So my philosophy is really very simple. The first thing is you want to eat whole foods. Right? You want, and when I say that, I don't mean the grocery store Whole Foods. I mean foods that are uh, the entire thing. So if you're not separated and denatured. So basically what that means is that you're, you're eating meat that's not processed. You're eating vegetables, right? You're eating uh, corn on the cob rather than some like corn chips that are that are ground corn mixed with a bunch of chemicals, right? You're actually eating the the food as it exists in nature. You know, you can cut it up if you like, but you're not really altering it very much. Basically, you want to go for food that comes from a farm, not food that comes from a factory. And a good rule of thumb for this is just to ask yourself, did this food exist 100 years ago? Right? And if the answer is yes, then, then that meets that requirement. That's, it's not like something like a, a cliff bar or a, you know, those protein bars are absolutely awful for you. I wouldn't recommend anybody eating those or artificial sweeteners or that kind of thing. It's, it's not even really food. It's, it's chemicals that are packaged as food, oftentimes mixed with actual food that has been completely destroyed and denatured. So the first and most important thing is stick to whole foods, right? I mean, you know, you can, you can have some ice cream every once in a while. You can have a granola bar. You can have a Snickers bar. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't ever do that. I'm just saying that you want to increase the amount of, of whole foods in your diet and decrease the amount of factory foods. And that goes for everything I'm about to say, by the way, right? These are, these are all rules where you don't have to follow 100%, but the closer to 100% you get, the more healthy you're going to be. Uh, the next thing that's very helpful is to go for foods that are, are organic, that are not genetically modified, and if they're uh, animal foods, that the animals were fed a natural diet, right? That the animals aren't, aren't fed a whole bunch of artificial junk food, because if the animals are, are fed artificial junk food, then uh, that's going to be the quality of the meat, or of the milk, or of the eggs, or whatever it is. So try to make it as natural as you possibly can. Now, once you have those two rules, once you have you're eating whole foods and you're eating whole foods that were grown in a natural way, then really all you have to do is to listen to your body. Your body is actually equipped with uh, sensors, let's say, to tell you what you need. 
And that's why you have certain cravings for certain things. Your body knows when you need more carbohydrates. It knows when you need more protein. It knows when you need more fat. And so instead of trying to write down on paper what your macro balance is going to be, oh, it's going to be 40% protein and 40% carbohydrates, like throw all of that out and listen to your body. Listen to what your body is asking for at the moment. Because as soon as you get rid of all the artificial crap, because the artificial stuff, the artificial food, will throw off your body's natural sensing mechanisms. That's why it's so pernicious, in part, uh, because your body knows what it needs unless you're giving it non-food, in which case it gets all messed up. So once you switch to eating real food, then just listen to your body for what it needs and it will guide you properly. Now, you're probably not going to be able to eat 100% whole food, and that's okay. So I, I give a, I'm going to give you a list of what are some of the most harmful uh, fake foods or the most harmful additives or ingredients in fake foods, and those are vegetable oil. So that look at the labels. That's in almost everything. And when I say vegetable oil, they named it, the name vegetable oil is marketing, right? You think vegetables, you think it's healthy, but really nothing could be further from the truth. This is, it, it should be called industrial industrial seed oil. This is canola oil, this is uh, corn oil, this is soybean oil, and a few other different kinds. That just generic light yellow oil is absolutely awful for you. And so all of your deep fried foods are going to be, are gonna be uh, cooked in that and completely soaked with it. There's a lot of it in processed foods. If you look at the box, you look at the ingredients, oftentimes there's vegetable oil. So that's something you definitely want to avoid. Uh, MSG, monosodium glutamate, you find that in a lot of processed foods. White sugar, high fructose corn syrup, uh, any kind of artificial sweetener, um, with, with maybe some exceptions, like uh, maybe stevia or monk fruit are all right. I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know about those. But for the most part, any artificial sweetener is gonna be awful for you. And then pretty much any chemical that you find on the label that you can't pronounce. Now, just because it's a chemical doesn't mean it's bad. And, you know, some, some like smart Alex are going to say, well, uh, dihydrogen oxide is a chemical and that just means water, right? But in general, if you don't know what the heck it is, it's probably best to stay away from it. And then the last thing that you want to do is you want to drink water. Look, in the United States of America, we, I think the number one cause of our obesity em epidemic is because a lot of us have replaced water with soda. And, and soda is, is particularly bad, one, because in the US we use high fructose corn syrup, which is a, a worse sugar than even the regular white sugar. It has a lot of it. And because it's in liquid form, it means that it doesn't fill your stomach the way that if you ate donuts it would. So basically you can, you can stuff yourself with donuts, let's say, and then eventually you get to a point where you can't fit any more donuts down your gullet. But you can still drink a soda, right? Because that's liquid. So you're, you're forcing that extra artificial sugar into your body even in excess of the capacity that your stomach has. So definitely avoid soda. I would say avoid pretty much every drink except for water. Make sure that at least 90% of your fluid intake is pure water. And I would highly recommend that the water you drink, you, re you remove the fluoride and you remove other contaminants. A lot of places, uh, and again, this is maybe just me biased as an American, but in the US, most water supplies are contaminated with fluoride and they put it in there intentionally. So if that's the case, then you need a special filter that's going to be able to remove that. Now, fluoride is not the only contaminant. There's chlorine, there's uh, birth control pills are now getting into the water supply and various other pharmaceutical drugs. So it's really worth the investment to get a, a decent filter that's going to get rid of that fluoride. It's going to get rid of those drugs. It's going to get rid of uh, bacteria and, and all the other crap that comes from our city water. So um, I actually recommend a, a big Berkey water filter. It's what I've been using for years. It gets rid of most of the fluoride. It gets rid of all the other contaminants. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description there where you can get that. It's a little pricey, but it's totally worth it. And in fact, something I learned just recently is that fluoride causes acne for a lot of people. So a lot of people that have had acne for a long time and just cannot get rid of it, cannot figure out why, as soon as they stop drinking fluoride water, the acne goes away. And I have no idea why that is, but it seems to work, and a lot of people swear by it. So that's basically it for food. 
Uh, now let's get into exercise. You know, people emphasize exercise a lot. I think exercise is, is important, but it's not as important as most people make it out to be. So I would say rather than uh, and most people do this. This is, this is how most people go about exercising. They sit down for 16 hours a day, and then for one hour a day, they go work out really intensely. I don't think that's natural, and I don't think that's healthy. So I would recommend that you reduce the sitting time as much as you can, and you do light exercise throughout the day as much as you can just naturally. So if you can walk, you can walk a significant amount, and you can run uh, every day, that's gonna be very helpful for you. Uh, so this is what I do, actually. This is my plan. I try to run every day. Um, I use a stand-up desk, by the way, so I'm not sitting constantly like most people are because sitting is horrible for you uh, in a variety of ways. If you can switch to a stand-up desk, and by the way, that's not something real easy to do. If you're used to sitting for, for eight hours straight at a desk, to switch to standing for eight hours straight is not easy. So you kind of want to be able to transition. So maybe you're sitting half the time and, and standing half of the time, and you can work your way up to standing all of the time. So what I do is I run every day, uh, you know, just for a few minutes. You know, when I'm at, in good enough shape, I'll run for 20 minutes, and not like fast running, really just kind of a, a moderate jog. Uh, and then I'll, yeah, I'll walk a fair amount, just I don't, I don't measure it, I don't do it specifically, it's just I like walking, walking feels good, so I walk. And then I'll, I'll lift weights twice a week, so I'll go to the gym for maybe 45 minutes and, and do weightlifting. And then uh, another big thing too is you want to restore your, your range of motion. So if, if you've been sitting for a long time, chances are your flexibility is destroyed and your posture is destroyed. You're probably, your hip flexors have gotten really tight, your gluteus muscles have gotten weak, your, lower, your, your inner uh, abdominal muscles have gotten weak, which are, are not the muscles that you work out by doing crunches, by the way. So it's, uh, you know, th there's a lot to this and it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but I would highly recommend that you do a little research into how you can restore your, your normal range of motion in your joints and in your muscles. So well, that's it for exercise. The next category that's really important is your sleep. So I recommend eight hours a night. Um, this is also something I recommend that you listen to your body, right? That some people need a little more sleep than eight hours, some people need less. So how are you feeling? Like how, how tired are you when you wake up in the morning? You should be able to wake up in the morning feeling good, feeling ready for the day. So then that might be more hours for some people, might be less for some people. So figure out what that is and stick to that. You wanna to stick to a consistent schedule. That's important because your body works on a circadian rhythm that if you, know, if you wake up at 7 a.m. one day and then you sleep until 11 the next day and you, you alternate, that's kind of gonna destroy the quality of your sleep. So try to avoid that. You wanna to try to reduce the light that you're exposed to at night, and especially blue light. Uh, this is something that if you think about 100 years ago, before everybody had light bulbs, when it got dark outside, it got dark inside. You know, maybe you'd have a candle that, that lit it up a little bit, but in general, the light or lack of light was a signal to your body to when it's time to be awake or when it's time to be asleep. So when it started getting darker, your body would start getting tired. It would, it would be a signal to you that you're supposed to sleep. And so if you're in completely bright light up until the moment that you hit the, the mattress, uh, and then you turn out the light completely, well, that's kind of a rough transition. And so if you can make it a smoother transition, like turn out part of the lights when it starts getting later, or if you have dimmer switches. Um, I, I just moved into a new house, and it's, it's rigged up with dimmer switches on every light in the house, which is awesome. I love that because it means that I can just dim it as the time goes on, and so it makes it much more natural to go to sleep. And then the other side of that is to have more light in the morning. So when you wake up in the morning, there's, there's two ways that I do this. Uh, the first thing I did was I bought a an alarm clock that works by light, that has a light bulb in it. And so when you're supposed to wake up, the light bulb gets on and, and gradually gets brighter and brighter. So it wakes you up in kind of a normal, uh, more natural way. It simulates the sun. And then another thing that I did was I got an electric blind that works on a remote control. So when I wake up, uh, before I get out of bed, I push the button on the electric blind and the blind comes up and I get all the sun in my room. And so for me, that makes it a lot easier for me to wake up and I feel a lot better when I do. 
And so that's it for the sleep. Now I have another, a few other miscellaneous things that I find helpful too, so I'll give you those as well. Uh, the first is to go outside every day. Um, it, to me, it just, it feels good. I feel so much better. You wanna get that sunlight. Um, you, it just, it's, it, it's not natural for you to be inside from morning until night and, and never get any sunlight, right? You know, people try to tell you that sunlight is bad for you. And I think that's true if you're not prepared for it and if you're getting it in, in too much of a dose. Like if you're getting sunburned, that's, in, uh, that, that's showing you that, it's, that you're getting too much, uh, right? But up until that point, sunlight is very good for you. It helps your mood and it helps your health. Um, I also like to go outside barefoot. Now, this is something that, uh, I've, you know, I've heard of, it's called grounding, and I'm, I'm not really sure if it works or not, uh, but it, it just kind of feels good to be, have that touch with nature, and probably I sound like some weird hippie, but I kind of like it. Just take a, a little walk in the sun, barefoot. If you're kind of in the country like me, it feels great. Another thing I highly recommend is you meditate every day. Um, I know I said this earlier, but that it, it not only helps you spiritually, but it also helps you physically. Um, of course, don't do drugs. Of course, you want to avoid drugs. And, and when I say drugs, I mean uh, the illicit, illegal type and the legal type, which by the way, most of the illegal drugs like the cocaine and the heroin were pharmaceuticals, right? They were invented by the pharmaceutical companies and then they stopped using them, uh, right? So I, I highly recommend that you stop using the pharmaceuticals as much as you possibly can and be very skeptical when doctors and especially psychiatrists tell you that you should be on drugs, especially if they tell you you should be on drugs forever, uh, right? Because uh, oftentimes they're just trying to make a buck or they are trying to make a buck for somebody else and they, because they've been told that that's how they make people healthy. Uh, but you know, you can see the results of the world around us, it's not working. So try to avoid the drugs as much as you possibly can. And be responsible about that, by the way, right? Their withdrawal is real. So if you're addicted to a drug, if you've been taking Adderall for the last 20 years every day, you don't want to quit cold turkey. It's going to hurt you. So, you know, f figure out what is the best, most responsible way to get off those drugs, but you do want to get off. Uh, another thing is to be careful about your skin products. When you rub something into your skin, your skin is absorbing that stuff and it gets into your bloodstream. So there's all sorts of nasty stuff that they put in skincare products, such as parabens and phthalates, which screw up your hormone levels. And, and I mean, those are the only ones that I know off the top of my head. There are probably more, but you wanna try to apply the same standard to your skincare products. You want things that existed 100 years ago. You want things that are made of natural products and not some weird chemicals that were invented in a lab and never occur in nature. Another thing that's important is to breathe clean air. Now, that's not always the easiest thing to do. That has a lot to do with where you live. And this is yet another reason why, as I explained in this video, it's probably a good idea to get out of the city and move to somewhere more rural. And there are a lot of reasons to do that, but particularly because you get to breathe clean air. But even aside from that, there are other things you can do, right? You can kind of get, get rid of the dust in your house. Um, you can get air filters that you can put in your house. There's other things you can do for that. Another thing that's important that's often overlooked is you wanna avoid electromagnetic radiation. This is something that's difficult because it's all around us. There's the cell phone towers, there's the radio towers, uh, there's our Wi-Fi boxes, there's our cell phones that are constantly emitting this stuff. And all of these waves are going into us. And then, you know, that's not to talk about the 5G, which is gonna make this 10 times worse uh, in the cities where that's gonna be rolled out. So basically you want to avoid that as much as you possibly can. And there's not so much that you can do about it. And actually there's, I'll, I'll recommend a book I'll put in the description here that I recommend all about how to avoid your exposure, but probably the biggest thing that you can do is keep your phone as far away from you as you can. You know, practically speaking, obviously, if your boss calls you and you need to be there to answer, right, you want it to be within earshot. But generally speaking, keep the phone away from you, especially away from your brain, away from your heart and away from your genitals, because those are the parts that are most susceptible. And then another thing that I did recently that's that's very helpful is to get rid of your Wi-Fi router. 
go back to using wired connections, using wired ethernet connections, uh, because the Wi-Fi router is, is a really strong source of EMFs that is very close to you. And so if you can get rid of that, that's helpful. Another thing you can do, another thing that's helpful is just to loosen up. This is something I kind of figured out recently that I was constantly tense. It's like all of my muscles were tense all of the time and it was giving me neck pain and it was giving me back pain and it was screwing up my posture and it was, it was probably making my voice sound awkward and it was making uh, it was making my head hurt sometimes and my eyes hurt. Like if you're constantly tight, uh, if you're, I mean, I think that's where they come up with the term uptight. Like if you're uptight, then your body is tight all the time. So try to just consciously loosen every muscle in your body every once in a while. And it's going to make you feel a lot better and you're going to have a lot less pain and uh, less better health in general, you're going to be stronger too, right? Because all of that tension in your muscles all the time is tiring you out. Whereas if you can release that, then you get all that energy back. Another thing you can do is get rid of plastic bottles, right? If you're drinking water from plastic bottles, if you're drinking soda from plastic bottles, that plastic is getting into the drink, right? Especially if it's soft plastic. Uh, and so and by the way, this, you know, people think, oh, it's only if it gets hot, right? If you leave your water bottle in the hot car, then it gets in. But what most people are not realizing is that that water bottle was probably sitting in 100 degrees weather in a warehouse for two weeks before it ever got to your refrigerator, right? So even if you've kept it cold, it's probably been hot before that. Uh, so if you're drinking that stuff, you're drinking plastic, uh, which is, you know, raises your estrogen levels and so, course, causes all sorts of havoc in your body. So try to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, avoid plastic food containers. You know, I, I've, and I've told, I'm told that fat actually leaches the plastic out too. So if you're putting fatty food in a plastic container, then you're getting plastic into the fat of that food. So if you can re replace those plastic containers with glass containers, then you don't have that problem. And then finally, try to enjoy yourself. Right, probably at this point your head is kind of spinning. So let me let me bring you back down to earth a little bit. Don't try to do all of this at once. Enjoy your life. If you if you try to try to uh, control every single little thing in your life so that you're perfectly healthy all the time and you're feeling totally uptight and stressed out because of it, well, you're kind of defeating the purpose. Uh, it reminds me there is an interesting study of of long-term health and people based on their drinking habits. And they, they tested three groups of some people who didn't drink at all, some people who drank moderately, and other people who drank a lot. And as you would expect, the least healthy people were the people who drank a lot. However, what was a little more surprising was that the people who drank moderately were generally healthier than the people who didn't drink at all. And so my interpretation of that is that people who are uptight uh, shoot themselves in the foot. Like if you are crazy about controlling every little thing and being perfect all of the time, then that is not good for you. If you let yourself loosen up and enjoy your life a little bit, enjoyment is healthy. If you can be happy, that is, is, is healthy for you. So keep that in mind, right? Don't, don't create a lifestyle that you hate because you're trying to be healthy because that's going to defeat the purpose. So that's it. That's, that's my whole philosophy in a nutshell about health. Uh, the final thing that I will recommend is that you do your, re your own research. Don't just blindly trust the experts, right? That's something I, I describe in detail in this video, which I highly recommend that you check out because oftentimes the so-called experts are following some agenda that is for the benefit of somebody who is usually not you. So you definitely don't, don't try to outsource this to somebody else. Um, try to understand this at least a little bit so that you have some control of what you're doing and you understand why you're doing it. So I hope that was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment, hit the thumbs up or the like button or whatever platform you're on. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And then um, I highly recommend you check out this video about why you shouldn't trust the experts.